ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا وسيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار أما بعد حق الوالدين عظيم The rights of the two parents is so great ومكانتهما عالية They occupy a very lofty position وبرهما من أفضل القربات and kindness to them is one of the greatest means of seeking nearness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَأَحَبِّهَا إِلَى اللَّهِ تَعَالَى And one of the most beloved of deeds to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَهُوَ قَرِينُ التَّوْحِيدِ It is connected with tawheed. وَسَبَبٌ لِدُخُولِ الْجَنَّةِ It is one of the reasons and causes of entering Jannah. بَلْ هُوَ مِنْ هُوَ أَوْسَطُ أَبْوَابِهَا It is indeed the middle door and entrance into Jannah. وَهُوَ خُلُقُ الْأَنْبِيَاءِ It is from the manners of the prophets of Allah. وَدَأْبُ الصَّالِحِينَ And from the practice of the pious. وَلِهَذَا أَكْثَرَ اللَّهُ عَزَّ وَجَلَّ ذِكْرَ الْوَالِدَيْنِ فِي الْقُرْآنِ الْكَرِيمِ That is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned the two parents in many verses of the Qur'an, وَأَمَرَ بِبِرِّهِمَا وَالْإِحْسَانِ إِلَيْهِمَا And has ordered us to show kindness to them. وَقَرَنَ حَقَّهُمَا بِحَقِّهِ فِي آيٍ كَثِيرًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He has co-joined their rights with His rights. وَاعْبُدُوا اللَّهَ وَلَا تُشْرِكُوا بِهِ شَيْئًا وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا Worship Allah and join none other with Him and do good. To your parents. Wa Rasulu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam bayyana thalika al-amr ghayat al-bayan. And the Messenger of Allah, he made this issue as clear as crystal. Wa naha an uquqihima fi ahadith kathira. And he has prohibited showing disrespect and disobedience to the parents in so many ahadith. An ibn Mas'udin radiyallahu anhu qal. سألت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم عبد الله بن مسعود May Allah be pleased with him. He says that I asked the messenger of Allah أي العمل أحب إلى الله تعالى Which of the deeds that a person does is most beloved to Allah قال الصلاة على وقتها Praying salah at the stated times قلت ثم أي And then I said which one comes next قال بر الوالدين kindness to parents قلت ثم أي then I said which one comes next قال الجهاد في سبيل الله الجهاد in the path of Allah إننا نرى عقوق الوالدين متفشيا منتشرا we see in this day and age disobedience to the two parents widespread particularly in these times أما غالب حال الشباب as for the overwhelming majority of the youth, male and female, فَإِنَّ مَنْزِلَةَ الصَّدِيقَ أَعْلَى مَنْزِلَةَ The position of the friend is higher than the position of the parents. وَأَجَلُّ مَكَانَةٍ مِنَ الْوَالِدَيْنِ The friend has a better position than the two parents. وَلَا حَوْلَ وَلَا قُوَّةَ إِلَّا بِاللَّهِ 
بل والله indeed by Allah رأينا من يتعامل بحسن خلق ولين جانب مع الكفار we have seen people who treat kuffar in a nicer way and treat their parents وهو سيء الطبع والخلق مع والديه and they treat in the most cruel and ruthless way with their parents وصدق الله and indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has spoken the truth يوم أخبرنا the day when he told us أن بعض الأبناء that some of our sons and daughters fitna are a trial وأن بعضا منهم عدو and others are outright enemies أحقا أيها الأبناء is it rightful O sons and daughters أن يصدر منكم هذا العذاب that you should torment your parents أما سمعتم نداء الآباء يقولون لكم have you not heard the calling of your parents when they say to you أنتم زينة في الرخاء you are the adornment in times of ease وعدة في البلاء and you are our support in times of hardship وعليكم تعلق الآمال and we put so much hopes on you أنتم حشاشة الكبد you are a piece of our liver وحبة القلب you are a piece of our hearts وريحانة العمر and a fragrance of life لا تحل الحياة إلا بكم life is never sweet without you ولا يطيب العيش إلا معكم life can never be good if you're missing from it ضحكاتكم تزيل الهموم your laughter it expels stress وابتساماتكم تبدد الهموم and when you smile it kills and gets rid of depression ولكن ما الذي جرى لكم but what has happened to you أقست قلوبكم have your hearts become so hard وهل تغير الزمان or is it that times have changed هل رددتم الحق have you been dutiful to your parents إليكم موجز المآسي here is a summary of tragic news إنها دمعات ساخنات it is the burning tears دمعة أم كبيرة رمى بها ولدها قرب النفايات the tears of an elderly mother whose son dumped her by the garbage dump وتركها وحدها and he left her all by herself ودمعة أم أخرى ضربها ولدها وطردها من بيتها and the tears of another mother who was beaten up by her son and then thrown out of the house وأم زاد مرضها بسبب ولدها and another mother whose illness worsened because of her son وفي دار المسنين كانت نهايتها and she ended up in the care home for the elderly ودمعة أب ضعيف ضربه ولده برصاص and the tears of a weak father whose son shot him dead ودمعة أب ضربه ولده لأنه أمره بالصلاة and the tears of another father because his son beat him up soundly for waking him up for salah والذي قال لوالديه أف لكما أتعدانني أن أخرج وقد خلت القرون من قبلي وهما يستغيثان الله ويلك آمن ويلك آمن ويلك آمن إن وعد الله حق فيقول ما هذا إلا أساطير الأولين but he who says to his parents أفن to both of you do you hold out the promise to me that I shall be raised up again when generations before me have passed away while they the father and the mother invoke Allah for help and rebuke their son and they say war unto you believe verily the promise of Allah is true listen to this amazing story أغرم رؤ يوما غلاما جاهلا بنقوده one day a man deceived a foolish youth and tempted him with his money حتى ينال به الوطر so that this money can get this man can get with his money his wish قال he said to this young man ائتني بفؤاد أمك 
Ya Fata. Bring me, I want you, oh young man, to bring me the heart of your mother. And in exchange, I will give you all the money and all the jewels and all the gold that I have. So he went without any hesitation. And he put a knife in her chest. And he took out the heart. And he left immediately. But because of his excessive speed, he fell on the ground. And the heart, it rolled and was covered with dirt. And the heart of his mother, covered in dirt, it called out to him and it spoke. Waladi, oh my son, Habibi, Hal Asabaka min Darar, O my beloved one, are you hurt? Fakaanna had a sot, Ragma Huluihi, Ghadabu Sama, Bihi Alal Waladin Hammer. This voice, despite its sweetness, it was as if it is the anger of the heavens descending upon this youth. Fastella Hinjarahu, Liat Anna Nafsa. So he took out his knife and he wanted to kill himself. So that this story remains an example for those ones who take heed. But before he could put the knife in his heart, the heart of his mother called out, Hold back your hand. And don't kill my heart twice. لا إله إلا الله ما أقصى الجهود جحود how evil how harsh is denial وأسوأ النكران and how evil is ungratefulness آباء يبذلون parents who sacrifice and spend ويمنحون and they give وأبناء يحرمون and sons and daughters who hold back and dispossess آباء يضحون بما يقدرون وبما لا يقدرون Fathers and mothers who sacrifice what they can afford and what they cannot even afford. يبخلون بما يملكون. And sons and daughters stingy with what they have. آباء, fathers and mothers. أحاسيسهم مرحفة. Whose feelings are sharpened. ومشاعيرهم فياضة. Overflowing with love. وعواطيفهم متوقدة. وَأَيْدِيهِمْ بِالْخَيْرِ مُمْتَدَّ And their arms overstretched, filled with goodness. وَأَبْنَا On the other hand, sons and daughters, قُلُوبُهُمْ أَقْسَى مِنَ الْحَجَرِ Their hearts harder than rocks. وَأَلْفَاظُهُمْ أَحَرُّ مِنَ الْجَمَرِ And their words burn like fire. وَأَلْسِنَتُهُمْ أَحَدُّ مِنَ السَّيْفِ And their tongues sharper than swords. أَخْلَاقُهُمْ their manners thicker than iron and steel. يبدلون الحسنة بالسيئة. They substitute goodness with evil. ويقلبون المعروف منكرا. And they turn what is good into evil. فلهم مثل السوء. For them is the is the worst of examples. كمن like the example. كمن لعق الثرى من الضمع. Like the person who because of thirst he started Licking the wet soil. When all of a sudden he came across a spring or a well. And he started drinking from the spring or the well. Until he was satisfied and he had quenched his thirst. And then he turned back and he started urinating in the same water. أين هذا من قوله تعالى where is this action from what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says? هَلْ جَزَاءُ الْإِحْسَانِ إِلَّا الْإِحْسَانِ Is there any reward for good other than good? نُشِرَ فِي إِحْدَى الصُّحْفِ قَدِيمًا Some time back, many years back, a newspaper reported this story. أَنَّ طِفْلَيْنِ كَانَا يَلْعَبَانِ فِي الشَّارِعِ Two young boys were playing on the street. وَفَجْأَةً رَأَيَا سَيَّارَةً يَقُودُهَا شَابٍ when they saw this car being driven by a young person. And the car stopped 
by the garbage dump. فَأَنزَلَ صُنْدُوقًا وَرَمَى بِهِ And he opened the trunk of his car and he took out a box and then he dumped it in the garbage dump. ثُمَّ ذَهَبَ مُسْرِعًا بِسَيَّارَتِهِ And then he left in a hurry with his car. فَتَوَجَّهَ الطِّفْلَيْنِ إِلَى هَذَا الصُنْدُوقِ And the two boys quickly went to this big box. فَرَجَعَا خَائِفَيْنِ مُنْدَهِشَيْنِ مِمَّا رَأَيَا And when the two young boys saw what they had seen, they quickly retreated back in fear and they went back to their parents. فَأَخْبَرَا وَالِدَهُمَا بِمَا رَأَيَا And they told their parents what they had seen. فَخَرَجَ الْوَالِدُ مُسْرِعًا إِلَى هَذَا الصُنْدُوقِ And so the father came out in a hurry in order to see this box. وَقَبْلَ وُصُولِهِ And before he could reach to where the box was, سَمِعَ أَنِينًا مُتَقَطِّعًا He had a painful groan. فَلَمَّا نَظَرْ When he opened the box, what did he see? فَإِذَا بِهِ يَرَى مْرَأَةً عَجُوزَةً مُسِنَّةً Inside the box is an elderly woman. لا تزال على قيد الحياة. Still alive. قد بان عليها أثر التعب. So much stress visible on her face. وحملها لينقذها. And he quickly took her in order to save her. وبعد التحقيق. And once he carried out investigations, تبين أن الذي وضعها هو ولدها. He came to realize that the person who dumped her was none other. Than her own son. La ilaha illallah. Innahum al abna. Yawm a'adhab al aba. These are the sons and daughters. The day when they tormented their parents. Allah to harik. Ra'asha to al ummahat. Some of us we have parents, old mothers, who are trembling because of old age. Wa dumu al aba. Allah to harik u shayan fi qulubina. When we see the tears. Of our fathers and mothers, does it not touch our hearts? هذا وربي مما يفتت الفؤاد. This by Allah, the tears of our parents is what breaks their hearts. إنه العذاب. It is indeed torment in this life. وقضى ربك ألا تعبدوا إلا إياه وبالوالدين إحسانا إما يبلغن عندك الكبر أحدهما أو كلاهما. فلا تقل لهما أف ولا تنهرهما وقل لهما قولا كريما واخفض لهما جناح الذل من الرحمة وقل رب ارحمهما كما ربياني صغيرا and your Lord has decreed that you worship none but him and that you be dutiful to your parents if one of them or both of them attain old age in your life say not to them a word of disrespect, nor shout at them, but address them in terms of honor, and lower unto them the wing of submission and humility through mercy. وَهَذِهِ سُورَةٌ مِنَ الْعَذَابِ And here is another example of torment that parents go through because of their sons and daughters. شَابٌ تَزَوَّجَ بِزَوْجَةٌ A young person, he got married to a woman. وَأَسْكَنَهَا مَعَ وَالِدَتِهِ فِي بَيْتِهَا And he brought in his wife to stay in his mother's house. وَكَانَتْ هَذِهِ الزَّوْجَةِ مِفْتَاحًا لِلشَّرِّ As for this wife, she was the key to all evil. مِغْلَاقًا لِلْخَيْرِ And she was a lock of everything that is good. أَثَارَةِ الْمَشَاكِلِ بَيْنَ الزَّوْجِ وَوَالِدَتِهِ She incited the husband against his mother. وَطَلَبَتِ الزَّوْجَةُ مِنْهُ أَنْ يُخْرِجَهَا مِنَ الْبَيْتِ And she demanded from the husband that he kick out his mother from the house. فَمَا كَانَ مِنْهُ إِلَّا أَنْ جَعَلَهَا فِي مُلْحَقٍ دَاخِلِيٍ فِي سُورِ الْمَنْزِلِ So what did the son do? He took her out and he put her in a room outside the main house but within the confines, within the enclosure of the walls of the house. تَقُولُ الْأُمْ And the mother says, مع كبر السن والمرض Despite my old age and my sickness وفي أيام البرد In the winter وذات ليلة And on one night in particular اشتد البرد The cold intensified وزاد نزول المطر And it rained so hard فجلست أطرق باب العمارة الداخلي She says I went to knock the main house أطلب منه 
All I wanted from my son was something to cover myself from the cold. But there was no hope. Until I became strained and was tired. وكاد يهلكني المرض an illness almost destroyed me وخرج لي بعد مضي وقت طويل and after a long while he opened the door فحملني and he carried me فظننت أنه سيحملني إلى داخل البيت she says I thought that he would carry me inside the house ثم تفاجأت when all of a sudden I saw أنه حملني في السيارة I saw him taking to his car, took me to his car. Fafarisht. She says, I became happy. Fadanantu annahu sayedhabu bi ila mustashfa. I thought that he would take me to the hospital. Lakin surana ma waqafa inda babi dari al ajazati wa riaya. He says, when I realize what the destination was, it is the home for the care of the elderly people. Subhanallah. هل نسي هذا وأمثاله؟ Has this person and his likes forgotten سهر الليل لتمريضه؟ How the mother used to keep awake. She used to stay awake at night in order to nurse him. يا ويل هذا يا ويل هذا من عذاب الله. Woe unto this person from the punishment of Allah سبحانه وتعالى. ألم يسمع قول النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم؟ كما روى البخاري في الأدب المفرد. Did this not, did this person not hear what the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم said? As Bukhari reports, كل الذنوب يؤخر الله منها ما شاء إلى يوم القيامة. Allah سبحانه وتعالى, He delays the punishment of any sin that He wills until the day of judgment. إلا عقوق الوالدين. Except Disobedience to the parents. فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ يُعَجِّلُهُ لِصَاحِبِهِ فِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا For Allah, He hastens the punishment of the person who disobeys his parents in this life before death. وَقَوْلُ النَّبِيِّ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمْ كَمَا رَوَى الْبُخَارِيُّ وَمُسْلِمْ وَغَيْرِهِمَا And the statement of the Messenger of Allah عن أبي بكر الصديق رضي الله عنه قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم the Messenger of Allah said, Ala unabbi'ukum bi akbar il kabair. Ala unabbi'ukum bi akbar il kabair. Ala unabbi'ukum bi akbar il kabair. Shall I not tell you what are the worst and the greatest of sins? Qulna bala ya Rasulullah. And the Sahaba said, Indeed, O Messenger of Allah. Qala wa dhakara ba'd al ishraq. And the Messenger of Allah he mentioned immediately after shirk. عقوق الوالدين disobedience to parents وما وكما أخرج النسائي والبزار في إسنادين جيدين أن زمام النسائي أن البزار report والحاكم وقال صحيح الإسناد عن ابن عمر رضي الله عنهما أن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال that the messenger of Allah said ثلاثة listen three types of people لا ينظر الله إليهم يوم القيامة. الله سبحانه وتعالى will not even bother to look at their faces on the day of judgment. العاق لوالديه the person who is disrespectful to his parents. ومدمن خمر and the person who drinks alcohol. والمنان عطاؤه and the person who makes it like a favor the kindness that he does for other people. وثلاثة and he says لا يدخلون الجنة. Three types of people will never enter Jannah. العاق لوالديه. The person who is disrespectful to his parents. What the youth and the one who has no jealousy over his women folk. والمترجلة من النساء. And the female person that dresses up and acts like a male person. والله يا شباب الإسلام لا شيء أسعد للقلب ولا أقر للعين. أو مسلم Youth, male and female, nothing that makes their hearts happier and brings so much comfort to their eyes. وَلَا أَسْكَنَ لِلْفُؤَادِ And brings more tranquility to their hearts. 
من أن يجتمع الوالد بأولاده تحت سقف واحد more than when the parents and the sons and the daughters are all united under the roof of one house يجمعهم الصفاء والحب all united by love and clean hearts يحن الكبير على الصغير the older one shows mercy to the younger one ويحترم الصغير الكبير and the younger one shows respect to the older one I أتظن did you think my brother and sister أن فراقك لأبويك سهل when you leave your parents do you think it is something easy والله لا شيء أقض للمضجع there is nothing that expels their sleep and denies them a peaceful rest ولا أشد على القلب and that is more severe to their hearts من فراق الأبناء وغيابهم when they have sons and daughters leave them and they go away إن القلب يشتاق إلى الأبناء don't you see their hearts it is longing with desire for the sons and the daughters إذا حضروا even when they are around فكيف بهم إذا غابوا what do you think when they go away far away ولعلنا نكاد نلمح لهفة يعقوب عليه السلام we can almost sense you can almost feel the grief of Ya'qub alayhi salam wa huwa yanzawi bidam'atin ba'idan an anzari al-la'imin as he cried tears of sorrow away from the people away from the eyes of the blameworthy people wa qala ya asafa ala yusuf wa biyaddat wa biyaddat aynahu min al-huzn fa huwa kazim qalu tallah tallahi taftau tazkur yusuf hatta تكون حرضا أو تكون من الهالكين. He says, Alas, my grief for Yusuf, and he lost his sight because of sorrow that he was suppressing. They said, By Allah, you will never cease remembering Yusuf until you become weak with old age, or until you be of the dead. فماذا قال? So what did he say to them? إنما أشكو بثي إنما أشكو بثي وحزني إلى الله وأعلم من الله ما لا تعلمون. He said, I only complain of my grief and sorrow to Allah, and I know from Allah that which you know not. إليك هذه القصة التي روتها كتب الأخبار. Here is a story that was reported in the books of Islamic history. أن أمية الكناني there was this man by the name Umayyat al-Kinani. كَانَ مِنْ سَادَاتِ قَوْمِهِ He was of the leaders of his tribe. وَكَانَ لَهُ إِبْنٌ إِسْمُهُ كِلَاب He had a son by the name Kilab. قَدِمَ الْمَدِينَةَ فِي زَمَنِ عُمَرْ رضي الله عنه The father and the son, they came to Medina when Umar رضي الله عنه was the khalif of the Muslims. فَسَأَلْ So Kilab, he started asking the Sahaba. He started asking the Sahaba, أي الأعمال أفضل؟ What is the best of all deeds? فأجيب And he was answered أنه الجهاد في سبيل الله That it is striving in the cause of Allah فسيره عمر في غزوة فارس So Umar رضي الله عنه Included his name in the army That was going to conquer Pashir فقال أبوه أمية So his father أمية said يا أمير المؤمنين هذا اليوم من أيامي لولا كبر سني أو أمير المؤمنين. He says I wish I could also go and join the army, but my old age it holds me back. فقام ابنه كلاب. So his son he stood up and he started speaking. وكان عابدا زاهدا and he was a true worshipper of Allah and a devoted person to Deen. قال he said لكن يا لكني يا أمير المؤمنين but as for me, O commander of the faithful, I will sell my life to Allah. And I will sell my life in dunya in exchange for akhirah. So he went with the army. Having pleased his father. One day, after he was gone, when the father was sitting under the shade of a date palm tree, 
وَإِذَا حَمَّامَةٌ تَدْعُوا فِرَاخَهَا When the father, the, old, the elderly father, as he was sitting under the shade of the palm tree, he looked up and he saw a pigeon. And the pigeon was calling out to its young ones. فَرَآهَا الشَّيْخُ فَتَذَكَّرَ وَلَدَهُ فَبَكَى When the old man, he saw the pigeon and its young ones, he remembered his son and he started crying tears. وَفَرَأَتْهُ الْعَجُوزَةُ فَبَكَتْ And the elderly mother, when she saw the old man crying, she also started crying. And then he said some very beautiful lines of poetry. He said, لِمَنْ شَيْخَانِ قَدْ نَشَدَا كِلَابًا كِتَابَ اللَّهِ لَوْ قَبِلَ الْكِتَابَ He continued onwards until he said, فَإِنَّكَ وَالْتِمَاسُ الْأَجْرِ بَعْدِ كَبَاغِ الْمَاءِ يَتْبَعُ السَّرَابَ he says, oh my son, if you only but knew that seeking rewards so long as I am alive is like going after a mirage thinking that it is water. So when word reached Umar radiallahu anhu that the father was extremely sorrowful over the departure of the son, فَكَتَبَ Umar, بِرَدِّ كِلَابٍ إِلَى الْمَدِينَةِ He said, bring him back to Medina. فَلَمَّا قَدِمَ وَدَخَلَ عَلَى Umar." When this young man came back to Medina and he entered upon Umar radiallahu anhu, so Umar asked him, ما بلغ من برك بأبيك? To what extent was your kindness to your father? قال, listen to what he said, كنت أوثره وأكفيه أمره. He says, I used to give him preference over myself and I used to fulfill all his needs. وكنت إن أردت أن أحلب له لبنا. He says, Whenever I wanted to give him milk, he says I would come to the camels and then I would look to, for the one which has the most milk and then I would take it and take it to a shade and then I would lay, let the camel rest and then he says I would wash it, the teats of the camel with cold water until it becomes cold. ثُمَّ لَهُ فَأَسْقِيَ And then once the teeth becomes cold, he says, then I would milk. Then I would give my father the milk to drink. فَبَعَثَ عُمَرْ إِلَىٰ So Umar, he sent someone to bring his father over. فَجَاءَهُ And the son was told to hide himself. So the father came. وَهُوَ يَتَهَادَ وَقَدْ ضَعُفَ بَسَرُهُ وَانْحَنَىٰ He had almost gone blind. And he was bending. فقال له, so Umar said to him, كيف أنت يا أبا كلاب? What is your situation? How are you doing, O Abu Kilab? فقال له, so he answered, كما ترى يا أمير المؤمنين. It is as you can see, O Amir al-Mu'minin. فقال يا أبا كلاب, ما أحب الأشياء إليك اليوم. He says, O Abu Kilab, what is the most beloved thing that you can wish for today? قال the old man said كلاب أحب أنه عندي فأشمه شم وأضمه ضم قبل أن أموت he says the most the greatest thing that I wish for is for my son كلاب if I could kiss him if I could smell him and then I could hug him one more time before I die فبكى عمر so عمر cried tears وقال and he said ستبلغ ما تحب إن شاء الله with the will of Allah, you will get what you wish. ثُمَّ أَمَرَ كِلَابًا Then Umar went to his son Kilab, and he told him, أَنْ يَحْلِبَ لِأَبِيهِ نَاقَ كَمَا كَانَ يَفْعَلْ He told him, go and milk for your father, just like you used to do for him. And he went and he did. وَنَاوَلَهُ عُمَرُ الْإِنَاء And then the, 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 the glass of milk was given to Umar. So Umar took it to his father. And he said, Ishrab ya Aba Kilab. Drink, O Abu Kilab. So the old man took the glass to drink. When he took it close, فَلَمَّا أَدْنَاهُ مِنْ فِيهِ When he took it close to his mouth, قال, he said, وَاللَّهِ يَا أَمِيرَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ إِنِّي لَأَشُمُّ رَائِحَةَ يَدَيْ كِلَاب He says, O Amir al-Mu'mineen, I can smell the smell of the hands of my son Kilab. Why should we be surprised? And we find it a similar story in the Quran when Yaqub alayhi salam said, Inni la ajidu Yusuf 
لولا أن تفندون فبكى عمر and Umar cried وقال له and he said to his father هذا كلاب عندك قد جئناك به he told him here is your son كلاب we have brought him back for you فوثب فضمه إليه ضمة and he stood up his father and he hugged him and everyone told him stay with your parents there is no ajr greater for you than your parents listen to this قال أحد الدعاة one of the scholars says that he witnessed this story. He says, ولد عاق عاق لأمه أودعها في إحدى دور العجزة. Subhanallah. This even happens in our own Muslim countries. This shaykh says that a disrespectful, disobedient, and grateful son, he took his mother and he dumped her in a care home for the elderly. ولم يزرها إطلاقا and refused to visit her completely. He never visited her. Until her situation, her health worsened. And she told the person in charge of the elderly home, please call my son so that I can see him. So that she could, she could hug him and kiss him before she dies. فَمَكَّنَهَا مِنَ الْإِتِّصَالِ بِهِ And the person in charge, he placed the call and then he gave the old, the old, the old woman the phone. وَخَنَقَتْهَا الْعَبْرَةِ And she started choking on her tears. وَهِيَ تُهَاتِفُهُ عَبْرَ الْهَاتِفِ As she spoke to her son on the phone, تَقُولُ لَهِ She was saying to him, يَا بُنَيَّ أَرْجُوكَ أَنْ تَحْضُرَ إِلَيَّ Oh my son, I want you to come to me. Inni uridu an araka qabla mawti. I want to see you before I die. Arju, uh, uh, arjuk, uhdur ilayya fi hadha dar. I'm beseeching you. I am crying out to you. Come and see me in this place. Faqala thalika alwalad. Listen to what he answered. Lan ahdur. I will never come, he said. Wa rafadha thalika alaaq. Wa tahajjaja bi dhiq alwaqt. And he started giving excuses that he doesn't have time. And then he hung up the phone. And he left her for a long time. And never visited her. Until her situation, her health deteriorated. And she died in the elderly home. When the people in charge of the home, they called him on the phone. لِيَحْضُرْ لِيَسْتَلِمَ الْجَنَازَ بَعْدَ وَفَاتِ وَالِدَتِهِ They told him, come and collect your dead mother's body. كَانَ جَوَابُهُ لَهُمْ Listen to what he answered them. أَكْمِلُوا بَاقِ الْإِجْرَاءَاتِ الرَّسْمِيَّةِ وَأَدْفِنُوهَا وَأَرِيحُونَ مِنْ شَرِّهَا He said, complete the paperwork and then bury her and get rid of her evil. قال علي رضي الله عنه listen to what Ali says فليعمل العاق ما شاء من العمل فلن يدخل الجنة العاق the person who is disrespectful to their parents let them do mountains of good deeds as much as they want for by Allah they will never enter Jannah وقال صلى الله عليه وسلم and the beloved messenger says لعن الله العاق لوالديه واللعن الطرد من الرحمة. He says, may Allah curse, may Allah curse the person who is disrespectful to their parents. And here, in a very quick summary, I will mention actions that people do that is والله full of disrespectfulness to our parents. The first one, إبكاؤهما وتحزينهما. Making them cry and putting, filling their hearts with sorrow. Sawa'an bil fi'il aw al either with your actions or with your words. It is one of the worst acts of disobedience. Number two, nahrihima wa zajrihima. Speaking to them harshly and disrespectfully. Wadalika bi raf'i sawt. By raising your voices. This is no laughing matter. She's talking to someone on the phone and the mother says, come and help me. 
but she couldn't be bothered to help. Likewise, very quickly, قِلَّةُ الْإِعْتِدَادِ And this is why I wish to emphasize, قِلَّةُ الْإِعْتِدَادِ بِرَأْيِهِ مَا Not caring when you don't care about the opinions of your parents. For example, your studies. You don't want to ask them anything. You don't want to seek their advice. And even more important than that, issues of marriage. When you want to get married, your parents, for their own reasons, they say, we don't want you to get married to this person. And you shrug your shoulders and say, I will go ahead and get married. Well, let me tell you something. That is not marriage. That is zina. So leave the house and go and commit zina. For by Allah, we have seen, we have heard of stories that wallahi can make the heart bleed. I know, for example, of a young woman. Her father and mother, they educated her. And they gave her the best that they could give. And they spent so much money on her. And they gave her the best education, both material education and Islamic education. Subhanallah, they even sent her to a Muslim country so that she could go and study deen. And when she came back, she started hanging around with men. And then she brings a man home and she says to her father, I want to get married to this man. And the man is incapable of even supporting her. So the father said, if you want to get married, I have no objection. But my daughter, why don't you bring a responsible person who can take care of you, can fulfill your needs. But you know what? She decided to walk out of the house. And she went ahead and married the man. And this is no marriage. Because in Islam, there is no marriage without the permission of the father. So she went ahead, she married the man, and subhanAllah, today, my brothers and sisters, she has been cut off from the rest of the family. No, nobody visits her. Nobody cares about her, whether she's dead, whether she's alive. She cannot even visit her mother, who's very ill at the moment. She cannot visit her. She cannot, because her mother does not want to see her. And maybe if her parents die, she will not be permitted to come anywhere near their bodies to see them even once more time. Is this what you want for yourself, sister? Huh? When you want to go for a man against the wishes of your parents? A'udhu billahi. This one is off record. I'm even ashamed to mention this. And maybe I shouldn't and maybe I should because it is very painful. One day a shaykh was called by a father. The father said to the shaykh, come and speak to my daughter. Al-Abus, frowning in their faces, putting on a very evil expression on your face. Some people, when sitting with their friends, you see them smiling, a good look on their face, good manners, Speaking nicely, when they enter the houses, and they sit in the presence of their parents, he turns into a lion. His situation changes, and the good manners disappear. It evaporates just like water. Subhanallah. Number five. Looking down on your parents. Huh? Looking down on them. قال معاوية رضي الله عنه قال من ما بر والده من شد الطرف إليه He says, he has not shown kindness to their parents. The person who looks with a sharp look at their parents. Likewise, الأمر عليهما giving them orders. Wash my clothes. Cook food for me. How dare you order around your mother and your father? Are they your slaves? Did you give birth to them? 
حسبنا الله ونعم الوكيل انتقاد الطعام الذي تعده الوالدة criticizing the food that your mother cooks she goes to the kitchen she spends hours cooking and then you come and look at the food what kind of food is this what is this I don't eat this stuff man أعوذ بالله من أخلاق الكفار نعوذ بالله first number one when you do this إنك تعيب الطعام you're actually insulting the food and the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم listen to the manners of his of your messenger ما عاب طعاما قط he has never spoken negatively ever about any food إن أعجبه أكل if he likes the food he eats وإلا ترك if he doesn't like it he doesn't eat it but he will never say anything negative about food likewise also it shows disrespect to your mother and this is in particular both for youngsters the youth male and female ترك مساعدتهما في عمل المنزل سبحان الله go to the houses see how much the mothers sweating out doing the laundry doing the washing doing the cooking where is the girl where is the young girl where are the boys maybe the young girl هداهن الله may Allah guide them she's on the phone for hours on end she's talking to a boyfriend she's talking to she doesn't want to listen to me so he came the Shaykh came and he spoke to the daughter what does she want she wants to marry a man against the wishes of the parents but the sad thing is the man had just reverted to Islam and wasn't interested in marrying this woman but rather this woman was forcing herself on this man and even she gave her number she gave the number of her father to the man she said please call my father I want you to get married to me if my father says yes you can marry me even if he says no you can still marry me so she call, he called the father and said could you please could you please hold back your daughter because I've only just become a Muslim I don't know nothing much about Islam I want to study Islam and I'm not prepared for marriage that is when the father said bring the Shaykh so the Shaykh came home and wallahi very shameful and very filthy but sometimes I need to mention such things lil ibra lil ibra lil ibra so that you can take heed a'udhu billah this is the mentality of our daughters so the shaykh came and he started speaking to her what is it that you want I want to get married forgive me I have no prejudice against people of other races or ethnicity wallahi I have nothing whatsoever except love for my brothers Muslims wherever they are whatever race they are but then this is what the young lady said I'm just narrating the story she said I don't want to get married to a Somali why don't you want to get married to a Somali so the Sheikh kept on pressing her pressing her pressing her finally she spoke and listen to what she said I will say this in Somali because it is very shameful she said Nimanka Somaliyad Magarane and Naga has said a lot of hair. I would be that. Wallahi, listen. Wallahi, Wallahi, this is very filthy. Could you keep still? Could you keep silent? Could you keep silent? Could you keep silent? Could you keep silent? I wonder, I would be that. What she wanted. What does she want? Does she want marital bliss? No, she doesn't want marital bliss. She doesn't want to live with a husband in a respectful relations. She wants to be defiled. That is what she wants. She wants to be defiled. And that is the key word. Don't go around saying that this man is incapable of doing this. He cannot do what I want. A'udhu billahi. How could you stoop so low, sister? Wallahi, this is aib that we shouldn't be mentioning it here. But we have to mention it so that you wake up. Either you wake up or you get destroyed. That is my message to you tonight. Al-Abus. 
frowning in their faces. Putting on a very evil expression on your face. Some people, when sitting with their friends, you see them smiling. A good look on their face. Good manners. Speaking nicely. When they enter the houses, and they sit in the presence of their parents, he turns into a lion. His situation changes. And the good manners disappear. It evaporates just like water. Subhanallah. Number five. Looking down on your parents. Huh? Looking down on them. قال معاوية رضي الله عنه قال من ما بر والده من شد الطرف إليه He says he has not shown kindness to their parents. The person who looks with a sharp look at their parents. Likewise, الأمر عليهما Giving them orders. اغسل الثياب Wash my clothes. أعدد لي الطعام. Cook food for me. How dare you? Order around your mother and your father. Are they your slaves? Did you give birth to them? لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله. حسبنا الله ونعم الوقيل. انتقاد الطعام الذي تعده الوالدة. Criticizing the food that your mother cooks. She goes to the kitchen. She spends hours cooking. And then you come and look at the food. What kind of food is this? What is this? I don't eat this stuff, man. أعوذ بالله من أخلاق الكفار. نعوذ بالله. First, number one, when you do this, إنك تعيب الطعام. You're actually insulting the food. And the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم, listen to the manners of, his, of your messenger. ما عاب طعاما قط. He has never spoken negatively ever about any food. In أعجبه أكل. If he likes the food, he eats. وإلا تركه. If he doesn't like it, he doesn't eat it. But he will never say anything negative about food. Likewise, also, it shows disrespect to your mother. And this is in particular, both for youngsters, the youth, male and female. ترك مساعدتهما في عمل المنزل. Subhanallah. Go to the houses. See how much the mothers sweating out, doing the laundry, doing the washing, doing the cooking. Where is the girl? Where is the young girl? Where are the boys? Maybe the young girl, Hadahun Allah, may Allah guide them. She's on the phone for hours on end. She's talking to a boyfriend. She's talking to Al Abus frowning in their faces, putting on a very evil expression on your face. Some people, when sitting with their friends, you see them smiling, a good look on their face, good manners, speaking nicely. When they enter the houses, وَجَلَسَ بِحَضْرَةِ الْوَالِدَيْنِ And they sit in the presence of their parents. إِنْ قَلَبَ لَيْثًا هَسُورًا He turns into a lion. تَبَدَّلَتْ حَالُهُ His situation changes. And the good manners disappear. It evaporates just like water. Subhanallah. Number five. أَنَّذَرُ إِلَى الْوَالِدَيْنِ شَزَرًا Looking down on your parents. Huh? Looking down on them, قال معاوية رضي الله عنه قال من ما بر والده من شد الطرف إليه He says, he has not shown kindness to their parents, the person who looks with a sharp look at their parents. Likewise, الأمر عليهما Giving them orders. اغسل الثياب Wash my clothes. أعدد لي الطعام. Cook food for me. How dare you? Order around your mother and your father. Are they your slaves? 
Did you give birth to them? لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله حسبنا الله ونعم الوكيل انتقاد الطعام الذي تعده الوالدة criticizing the food that your mother cooks she goes to the kitchen she spends hours cooking and then you come and look at the food what kind of food is this? what is this? I don't eat this stuff man أعوذ بالله من أخلاق الكفار نعوذ بالله first Number one, when you do this, إِنَّكَ تُعِيبُ الطَّعَامِ You're actually insulting the food. And the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, listen to the manners of, his, of your Messenger. مَا عَابَ طَعَامًا قَطْ He has never spoken negatively ever about any food. إِنْ أَعْجَبَهُ أَكَلْ If he likes the food, he eats. وَإِلَّا تَرَكَ If he doesn't like it, he doesn't eat it. But he will never say anything negative about food. Likewise, also, it shows disrespect to your mother. And this is in particular, both for youngsters, the youth, male and female. تَرْكُ مُسَاعَدَتِهِمَا فِي عَمَلِ الْمَنْزِلِ Subhanallah. Go to the houses. See how much the mothers sweating out, doing the laundry, doing the washing, doing the cooking. Where is the girl? Where is the young girl? Where are the boys? Maybe the young girl, Hadahunna Allah, may Allah guide them. She's on the phone for hours on end. She's talking to a boyfriend. She's talking to, this is no laughing matter. She's talking to someone on the phone and the mother says, come and help me. But she couldn't be bothered to help. Likewise, very quickly, قِلَّةُ الْإِعْتِدَادِ And this is why I wish to emphasize, قِلَّةُ الْإِعْتِدَادِ بِرَأْيِهِمَا Not caring when you don't care about the opinions of your parents. For example, your studies. You don't want to ask them anything. You don't want to seek their advice. And even more important than that, issues of marriage. When you want to get married, your parents, for their own reasons, they say, we don't want you to get married to this person. And you shrug your shoulders and say, I will go ahead and get married. Well, let me tell you something. That is not marriage. That is zina. So leave the house and go and commit zina. billah. For by Allah, we have seen, we have heard of stories that wallahi can make their heart bleed. I know, for example, of a young woman. Her father and mother, they educated her. And they gave her the best that they could give. And they spent so much money on her. And they gave her the best education, both material education and Islamic education. Subhanallah, they even sent her to a Muslim country so that she could go and study deen. And when she came back, she started hanging around with men. And then she brings a man home and she says to her father, I want to get married to this man. And the man is incapable of even supporting her. So the father said, if you want to get married, I have no objection. But my daughter, why don't you bring a responsible person who can take care of you, can fulfill your needs. But you know what? She decided to walk out of the house. And she went ahead and married the man. And this is no marriage. Because in Islam, لا نكاح إلا بإذن الولي. There is no marriage without the permission of the father. So she went ahead. She married the man. And subhanallah, today, my brothers and sisters, she has been cut off from the rest of the family. No, nobody visits her. Nobody cares about her. Whether she's dead, whether she's alive. She cannot even visit her mother who is very ill at the moment, she cannot visit her. She cannot, because her mother does not want to see her. And maybe if her parents die, she will not be permitted to come anywhere near their bodies to see them even once more time. Is this what you want for yourself, sister? Huh? When you want to go for a man against the wishes of your parents? A'udhu billahi. This one is off record. I'm even ashamed to mention this. And maybe I shouldn't, and maybe I should, because it is very painful. 
One day a shaykh was called by a father. The father said to the shaykh, come and speak to my daughter. This is no laughing matter. She's talking to someone on the phone and the mother says, come and help me. But she couldn't be bothered to help. Likewise, very quickly, Qillatul i'tidad, and this is why I wish to emphasize, Qillatul i'tidad bi ra'yihima, not caring when you don't care about the opinions of your parents. For example, your studies. You don't want to ask them anything. You don't want to seek their advice. And even more important than that, issues of marriage. When you want to get married, your parents, for their own reasons, they say, we don't want you to get married to this person. And you shrug your shoulders and say, I will go ahead and get married. Well, let me tell you something. That is not marriage. That is zina. So leave the house and go and commit zina. For by Allah, we have seen, we have heard of stories that wallahi can make the heart bleed. I know, for example, of a young woman. Her father and mother, they educated her. And they gave her the best that they could give. And they spent so much money on her. And they gave her the best education, both material education and Islamic education. Subhanallah, they even sent her to a Muslim country so that she could go and study deen. And when she came back, she started hanging around with men. And then she brings a man home and she says to her father, I want to get married to this man. And the man is incapable of even supporting her. So the father said, if you want to get married, I have no objection. But my daughter, why don't you bring a responsible person who can take care of you, can fulfill your needs. But you know what? She decided to walk out of the house. And she went ahead and married the man. And this is no marriage. Because in Islam, la nikaha illa bi wali. There is no marriage without the permission of the father. So she went ahead, she married the man, and subhanallah, today, my brothers and sisters, she has been cut off from the rest of the family. No, nobody visits her, nobody cares about her, whether she's dead, whether she's alive. She cannot even visit her mother, who's very ill at the moment, she cannot visit her. She cannot, because her mother does not want to see her. And maybe if her parents die, she will not be permitted to come anywhere near their bodies to see them even once more time. Is this what you want for yourself, sister? Huh? When you want to go for a man against the wishes of your parents? A'udhu billahi. This one is off record. I'm even ashamed to mention this. And maybe I shouldn't and maybe I should because it is very painful. One day a shaykh was called by a father. The father said to the shaykh, come and speak to my daughter. She doesn't want to listen to me. So he came. The shaykh came and he spoke to the daughter. What does she want? She wants to marry a man against the wishes of the parents. But the sad thing is the man had just reverted to Islam and wasn't interested in marrying this woman. But rather this woman was forcing herself on this man. And even she gave her number. She gave the number of her father to the man. She said, please call my father. I want you to get married to me. If my father says yes, you can marry me. Even if he says no, you can still marry me. So she call, he called the father and said, could you please? Could you please hold back your daughter? Because I've only just become a Muslim. I don't know nothing much about Islam. I want to study Islam and I'm not prepared for marriage. That is when the father said, bring the shaykh. So the shaykh came home. And, wallahi, very shameful and very filthy. But sometimes I need to mention such things. Lil ibra, lil ibra, lil ibra. So that you can take heed. A'udhu billah, this is the mentality of our daughters. So the shaykh came and he started speaking to her. What is it that you want? I want to get married. Forgive me, I have no prejudice against 
people of other races or ethnicity. Wallahi, I have nothing whatsoever except love for my brothers, Muslims, wherever they are, whatever race they are. But then, this is what the young lady said. I'm just narrating the story. She said, I don't want to get married to a Somali. Why don't you want to get married to a Somali? So the Sheikh kept on pressing her, pressing her, pressing her. Finally, she spoke and listened to what she said. I will say this in Somali because it is very shameful. She said, Nimanka Somali aid, Magarane and Naga has said a lot of hair. Aoudu billah. Wallahi, listen. Wallahi, Wallahi, this is very filthy. Could you keep still? Could you keep silent? Could you keep silent? Could you keep silent? Could you keep silent? I wonder, a'udhu billah, what she wanted. What does she want? Does she want marital bliss? No, she doesn't want marital bliss. She doesn't want to live with a husband in a respectful relations. She wants to be defiled, wal'iyadu billah. That is what she wants. She wants to be defiled, and that is the key word. Don't go around saying that this man is incapable of doing this. He cannot do what I want. A'udhu billahi. How could you stoop so low, sister? Wallahi, this is aib that we shouldn't be mentioning it here. But we have to mention it so that you wake up. Either you wake up or you get destroyed. That is my message to you tonight. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa ant. Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. She doesn't want to listen to me. So he came. The Shaykh came and he spoke to the daughter. What does she want? She wants to marry a man against the wishes of the parents. But the sad thing is the man had just reverted to Islam and wasn't interested in marrying this woman. But rather this woman was forcing herself on this man. And even she gave her number. She gave the number of her father to the man. She said, please call my father. I want you to get married to me. If my father says yes, you can marry me. Even if he says no, you can still marry me. So she call, he called the father and said, could you please, could you please hold back your daughter? Because I've only just become Muslim. I don't know nothing much about Islam. I want to study Islam and I'm not prepared for marriage. That is when the father said, bring the Shaykh. So the Shaykh came home. And, wallahi, very shameful and very filthy. But sometimes I need to mention such things. Lil ibra, lil ibra, lil ibra. So that you can take heed. A'udhu billah, this is the mentality of our daughters. So the shaykh came and he started speaking to her. What is it that you want? I want to get married. Forgive me, I have no prejudice against people of other races or ethnicity. Wallahi. I have nothing whatsoever except love for my brothers, Muslims, wherever they are, whatever race they are. But then, this is what the young lady said. I'm just narrating the story. She said, I don't want to get married to a Somali. Why don't you want to get married to a Somali? So the Sheikh kept on pressing her, pressing her, pressing her. Finally, she spoke and listened to what she said. I will say this in Somali because it is very shameful. She said, Nimanka Somaliyad, Magarane and Naga has said a lot of hair. A'udhu billah. Wallahi, listen. Wallahi, Wallahi, this is very filthy. Could you keep still? Could you keep silent? Could you keep silent? Could you keep silent? Could you keep silent? I wonder, A'udhu billah, what she wanted. What does she want? Does she want marital bliss? No, she doesn't want marital bliss. She doesn't want to live with a husband in a respectful relations. She wants to be defiled, wal'iyadu billah. That is what she wants. She wants to be defiled, and that is the key word. Don't go around saying that this man is incapable of doing this. He cannot do what I want. A'udhu billahi. How could you stoop so low, sister? 
Wallahi, this is aib that we shouldn't be mentioning it here. But we have to mention it so that you wake up. Either you wake up or you get destroyed. That is my message to you tonight. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa ant. Astaghfirullah.